Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Okay, um, here is another scripture meditation. It's Sunday morning in Jakarta. I'm just about to go to Mass. And the theme for this meditation is um, what I would like to call the Sunday Demon. Now, I don't know if I've lost my mind, but as far back as I can remember, Sundays are usually the most anxious and depressing days of the week for me. Ever since I was a child, I'd always get depressed and anxious before Monday. And usually I'd have no objective reason for feeling this way. It isn't like I had any... Um, true evidence that something would go wrong. And usually Monday would turn out to be just another Monday. But even to this day, I wake up with this terrible dread of what's coming. Um, now, as a 42-year-old adult, I have uh, concerns uh, that, you know, regarding my, my parents who are elderly, you know, the future of my, for my children and things like that. So, my main concern on Sunday mornings usually revolves around that. What happens if I lose my job? What would happen to my family? And and I thought, well, if, as a religious person, what, what, what does Jesus have to say about it? And it's very clear, he says, do not worry. doesn't mean be lazy. It doesn't mean to be lazy. It just means do not worry. You can't do anything about it. If you lose your job, you lose your job. You just find another job. Or um, you have no control over what happens tomorrow. Uh, just the other week, we had an earthquake here in Indonesia, and it was just a normal day. I was just, you know, marking papers, uh, uh, and uh, I was on the fifth floor of a of a, of a reinforced concrete building, uh, cinder block building, and next, you know, that building just shook, just swayed left and right, like it was just made of rubber. Uh, house of Cards is about to come down. And I had absolutely no preparation for that. So, the bottom line is, we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. We have no idea. And until we learn how to let that go, and just focus on being the best people we can be right now, avoiding hate, avoiding uh, uh, division and hatred, um, that would be the, the first thing that you can do right now. Um, in the Catholic tradition, we have what are called the four virtues, which are prudence, justice, fortitude, and um, let's see, justice, fortitude, prudence, justice, fortitude, prudence, and moderation. Sorry, I'm waking up. Uh, moderation just means you don't do too much of anything. Um, if you like pizza, you have it, but within moderation. If you like alcohol, you have it within moderation. In other words, it doesn't become an idol for you. Um, justice would be that you treat everything equally. You treat everyone equally. You give, you give to God what God deserves. You give to mankind what man deserves. Um, and so, fortitude is just you roughing it out. If you're having a tough time, you have to rough it out. God's not going to do it for you. Um, in the military, uh, they have something called embrace the suck. I don't mean to be vulgar, but it just means that if you're in a situation where everything's going wrong and you can't do anything about it, embrace it. Don't run away from it. Embrace it. And in, in Christian terms, we would say embrace the cross. Embrace it. Embrace that weakness. Embrace that vulnerability. And just do what you can within your power to get out of it. Okay? Now... This morning I decided to pray Psalm 119. It's the longest one of all. It is a total of 176 verses. And there was one that really stood out to me because the central theme of my channel is the Liturgy of the Hours, the breviary. And it says at verse 164, Seven times a day I praise you because your judgments are righteous. Now it's easy when we're reading the Bible to uh, let some of these verses go by without a second thought. But this is one that you really have to think about. Seven times a day, I praise you. Well, in the liturgy of the hours, we pray seven times a day if we pray all the hours. Because 
your judgments are righteous. So what happens is when we go to the scriptures, when we go to the liturgy of the hours, it presents to us the truth behind all that's happening in our lives. You could be going through the worst experience possible, but behind all that, God is still God, God is still eternal, and He's always there for you. Uh, does it mean that your circumstances will change because there are many other factors involved in that? Okay, many other factors. But you can still keep your poise, you can keep your place in reality, in God's presence, um, and react accordingly uh, because God's judgments are right. God's judgments can't be wrong. If you're placed in a situation beyond your control, embrace it. You know, go spiritual military, embrace it. Don't run away from it. It's not going to feel good, it will hurt, but you will grow from it. You will grow from it. Seven times a day I praise you. So why seven times? Because seven is considered a perfect number in the Hebrew tradition. And um, honestly, I think it takes about seven times to keep the word fresh in my mind because we all know how easily distracted we become. So seven times a day, try to praise God, whether it's reading the scriptures or just silent meditation. And of course, the liturgy of the hours, I highly recommend it. Um, and please watch my other videos on the general instruction. It's not just academia, it is theology, it's spirituality. So please pray for me as I pray for you, um, and we'll get through this together. And I'm going to repeat uh, that verse again. Seven times a day I praise you, I praise you, because your judgments are righteous. Seven times a day I praise you because your judgments are righteous. So in other words, if you trust in God's word, live according to his word no matter what happens you will be in a good place whether here or in heaven because we all know how those situations can shape us into very bad people we can make some very bad decisions in crises but if we trust in God, God's word and do exactly what he says and not what we want if we represent God and not ourselves the results will be much, much better. Much, much better. If I could turn back the clock, I would have definitely followed that advice much more uh, wholeheartedly because too many times I acted out of ego. I wanted to win an argument. I wanted to come out on top rather than letting God's word live through me, even if it means suffering, humiliation. And I... I got myself into some very nasty situations just because I wasn't able to swallow my pride and actually obey God's word without questioning it because his judgments are righteous. Okay. And then if you go to the next verse, it's, uh, Psalm 119, 165, it says, Lovers of your law have much peace. For them there is no stumbling block. And that's exactly what I was trying to say. Lovers of your law. Now, the word law often has negative connotations. It looks, sounds legalistic, it sounds political, but actually um, the English translation is a bit literal. What it actually means is lovers of your way, lovers of your way of life, lovers of God's ways, which becomes law. It becomes a law for you. If you really love God, it will be like a law to you. You'll want to follow it without asking. So, <clears throat> if you love the ways of God, the ways of love and peace, there will be no stumbling block because they can't, no one can take that away from you. No one. No job layoff, no uh, physical attack, no earthquake can take that away from you because it's here. Alright, the kingdom of God is within. Alright, so I'm about to go to Holy Mass. Please pray for me. Let's stick together in this. We're all the body of Christ. Come Holy Spirit.